say I don't think most people would have expected a carnage of this going into Diwali and now as we stand around 8,000 Sensex the big question is whether we've seen most of the pain at least and if we have in terms of price and in terms of time how much do we have to do before we get out of the woods uh, painful that it is we've got to look ahead and see how long it will take to reconstruct and rise from the debris that the stock market is today Shankar Sharma, Rakesh Junjunwala and Samir Arora, uh, all of them familiar faces to all of you down the years, join me. We've kept the club really small this time, not to confuse it with too much opinion, but uh, just to give you representation from people who've seen many of these bull and bear markets and have taken different stances over courses of time. Gentlemen, thanks very much and happy Diwali to all of you. Shankar, you've been the most circumspect. Do you think most of the damage is done or is there more to come, you fear? All I can say is uh, <clears throat> this time it is truly different. <laughs> so, uh, you know, usually it's wrong to say that and it's a cliche, but I think, you know, this is just something completely of the realms of possibilities. You've uh, seen anything like this in your life? No, never, never. And I hope I don't see too much of this anymore. But uh, that said, you know, beginning of the year it did look like, uh, you know, the bull market was drawing to a close. <laughs> Uh, you know, one had reasonable, uh, reasonably optimistic price targets, if you will, in, 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 in hindsight. Uh, my sense is you are not done with this thing either here or globally. Uh, you know, we will have rallies of the kind that we have seen intermittently over the last three or four months time, although, you know, even a brief rally these days is very elusive. Uh, and the reason why I say that's, you know, that the, the, the pain is still not over and I think there's still downside is, uh, I don't see any revival of any of the factors that drove the last bull market uh, any time in the next 12 months time, could be even longer. And you know, of course, during the program, I'm sure, you know, each one of us will elaborate on those, but, uh, and the chief, ch chief problem that exists this time is the rise of the US dollar. That to my mind, at the very heart of it is the reason why emerging markets will probably not come back as, a, as an asset class for quite a while to come. Because the reason why they did well was because of the weak US dollar uh, that drove up uh, you know, commodity prices, that drove up earnings in emerging markets in general, made a flight away from US dollars into non-US dollar assets. That tide has changed. Now the US dollar is back to being the safe haven, uh, the reserve currency, uh, if you will. That change is not going to reverse anytime soon. So you will see the euro weaken against the dollar. All EM currencies are very, very weak against the dollar. That's the central problem. It's not just about India or the, or the BRIC countries. The larger problem for emerging markets is the strength of the US dollar. Rakesh, what do you think? How close are we to a bottom? And even if you can't answer that, do you think most of the pain in terms of price is done? See, there was a, there was a kaka in the stock market. Or somebody in 1992, I told him, I am worried, stocks are priced, so they don't, they are not justified by the fundamentals. So he said, Abhi sab funda ka mental hai. So let's not talk fundamentals. See, you are, you know, all value is an expression of opinion. And all opinions are influenced by emotion and news, both on the downside and the upside. Just at 21, 22,000, we felt it will never end. A lot of people felt. You had an occasion where Mr. Ambani sold 5% of Reliance Petroleum on the, uh, on the screen and their Economic Times reported it and after that also people were buying Reliance Petroleum at higher prices. So I think what's going to happen in markets here, we are going to go through three phases. First is going to be a phase of stabilization. And I think that stabilization is going to be linked a large part not to local factors but to international factors. Then I think we'll have to go through a phase of consolidation, no doubt about it. And you'll have to go, then you'll have to go through into a new market. And I remain, I think, I, to my mind, I don't understand how the dollar is, dollar is defined gravity. If the, if the only way, if housing is to ease in America, if consumption is to ease, the only way the American economy can, you know, can, can stabilize is by growing exports. And with this value of the dollar, I don't know what will happen to American exports. And they also require 6 to 7 percent current account deficits. Who is going to finance it and for what reason? How long will uh, my driver save, put that money in a bank and the Indian government will invest it in US Treasury bonds or for that person in, in America? So I think the dollar has to reverse. It's only a question of matter of time. As far as the Indian fundamentals are concerned, I think, I don't know how worse and how better they can get, but to my judgment, we are best suited, amongst the countries in the world, best suited to you know face this, whatever problems are arising. And I also feel that, you know, markets have not, I cannot make sense of the fact that five months ago, 
I was told there's a story on the Bloomberg that has been confirmed that a Korean development bank is buying Lehman Brothers. Today, people are selling Korea because the Korean banks have got hundred billion dollars of debt which is coming up for renewal over the next twelve months, guaranteed by the Korean government, and that debt will not be, you know, that debt will not be renewed. So I don't know what's changed in five weeks. So therefore, you know, this is the phase in markets when you can't <coughs> talk sense. You just have to look at prices. You got to look at technical factors. You got to look where world market will stabilize. India will stabilize. Only I can say one thing is today the market went to a point because it gained five percent and it held. It gained another five percent from that point. So I think unless and until there are two days or three days of successive gains in international markets, we are not going to stabilize. Samir, what's your take? Uh, I'm sure the events of the last couple of months would have come as a bit unexpected, uh, in, at least in the time in terms of the price erosion. But do you think most of it is done? Uh, yes, totally surprising in the last few months. But in general, my theory has been what Rakesh just said that this market will rise when it stops falling. Uh, and you know, I a little bit disagree with Shankar on the point that it is as if it is an all or none situation. US dollar, even I agree, there's no logic for it to keep. Uh, strengthening over time but even if it did the world does not come to an end if you see how the markets have been behaving in the last few months it is as if they are supposed to go to zero because there is a recession next month uh, next year or this year and stuff like that ultimately things don't go to zero and as of now i think the market would celebrate and as i said last time just the reduction in volatility just the fact that the markets don't fall would be enough so right now when we look for optimism we are just saying that if the market were to stabilize, then we would get, uh, uh, you know, uh, an environment where world evaluates what India and other relative strengths of the uh, of the world are, and I think India has, is very well poised for it. So as of now, we don't have to revisit what was the reasons for the last bull run because the last bull run was something which made stocks go five times. If today you could tell investors that you would just go back to September 30th in, uh, uh, market, which is effectively a 65% rally because the market has fallen about 40% uh, this month. Uh, even if you could say that it would happen in three years, you could get all the money in the world. So the point is, it just has to stop falling and then I think there will be one sharp reversal and then things will stabilize and may take long. But as fund managers, as current investors, nobody would mind that and that would be the seeds for a new run. You may not call it a bull run, but even if today Shankar said, you know, you can't reach the last bull run for five years, that would be humongous returns from today. So the point is that we have fallen so sharply that even getting back a month ago would be a very, very significant appreciation in, in the market. And uh, that will start one day very soon because it cannot fall at the pace at which it has been falling. Before that process starts, Shankar, do you expect more price erosion, even from 8,000 Sensex? Look, that's, uh, I mean, that's, frankly speaking, that's no call to make because, uh, you know, from 8,000 we could, we could rally to uh, 10,000, you know, conceivably. And those would be very quick, very sharp, could be over in 10 days' time. Those kind of things will happen. If you're smart enough to play that, uh, you know, you will play that. My sense is looking at individual stocks, looking at uh, the baskets of various stocks. I mean, I don't see how telecom will ever come, come back to even 30% uh, close to its highs. I don't see how real estate will ever even double from these levels. I don't see how infrastructure stocks like Jayaprakash Industries are even going to make their way back to 150 bucks. I don't see how Reliance Industries is going to go to 3200 bucks. Uh, I mean, I don't see so many stocks based on a variety of factors ever trading anywhere close to their highs so therefore uh, you know the probability of their even ca you know you know rallying 30 percent and sustaining is very slim because i'm sure that view is generally it's not just my view i don't think a lot of people uh, sort of disagree with that uh, thesis that a jayaprakash industry the dlf may or may not uh, you know may not ever get back to even 100 percent higher prices which means that the wave of selling which might abate for a day or two will come back in all fury moment you see some kind of you know uptick on the prices and that will keep capping your gains uh, whether we like it or not, that's really the way this market is. Uh, a lot of leveraged money came into a lot of asset classes. That leverage is gone, is going, is being pulled. Uh, as it always happens, the asset class that did the best will be the one that gets the, uh, you know, gets hurt the most. So in India, capital goods and banks did the best, and you see how they've done, uh, you know, lately in the last eight or nine months. Overall, on a global basis, the BRIC countries did the best. 
you see exactly what has happened. US was the laggard market for the five years of the bull run. It has been actually a terrific outperformer, down only 33%. India is down about 65%. Uh, most most other you know BRIC countries are down about the same. So you can imagine you know just being long US and short EM, you made a 30% relative return. So this you know the whole legs from this bull market have been cut. Let's make no mistake about it. We are not going to see the highs to this market for many many years. Uh, the whole construct, the underpinnings of the markets have to change, newer players have to emerge, new sectors have to come up for that new next uh, bull run to happen. So right now I'd be very happy with a 10% rally in the markets. Beyond that, you know, I don't think anything sustained. बाकी टीम कहाँ है? बुलाना पड़ेगा। हम्म अच्छा। मेरे पापा आ गए, मेरे पापा भी आ गए। सब आ गए ना? अभी कुछ लोग और बाकी हैं। हाँ? इनका फ्यूचर सेक्योर करने में कहीं आप भी इनका आज तो नहीं मिस कर रहे। इनके कल की चिंता छोड़िए, अभी बात चाइल्ड प्लान्स पर। और इनके आज को एंजॉय कीजिए खुल के अभी वाला लाइफ इंश्योरेंस कल पर कंट्रोल Others had long given up. You followed your heart when others listened to their minds. You always had a reason when others looked for excuses. Now, Lufthansa and CNBC TV 18 would like to honor you on all for this one moment where you can share the highs, the lows, and your memorable moments of entrepreneurship with none other than India's biggest business icons. Are you an entrepreneur with dreams as big as India's biggest business legends? Log on to onemoment.moneycontrol.com. Tell us your story about the journey that changed your life. Last date of registration, 10th November. Refex Refrigerants Limited. Let's go green. Celebrate Diwali Dhamaka with Central Bank of India's higher interest rates on deposits of 10% for 400 days and 10.25% for 555 days. Hey, why are you not a SIP specialist? Yani KEI. Charlie's version is a pragati ke saath. Umi do se aage. Hum hai KEI. Wires and cables ke specialist. KEI. The private sector as well as government agencies are leveraging IT to increase efficiency. Find out more about these strategic alliances and how they can fuel growth. NASCOM and CNBC TV 18 present Increasing IT Adoption in India. Join us in this special panel discussion where business leaders and experts explore how increasing IT adoption can empower the nation. At these times, only on CNBC TV 18. Media partner, CHIP, online partners, IndianTelevision.com and MoneyControl.com, online media partner, Biztech2.com, official digital partner, Business Q. तेरा प्रॉब्लम क्या है कि तूने अपने बीवी के हाथ से थप्पड़ खाया तुम लोग पढ़े लिखे हो कमाते हो यार तो क्या भाई मैं अपने इंसल्ट भूल जाऊं सॉरी भाई मैंने थप्पड़ मारा तो सॉरी भाई और बीवी ने थप्पड़ मारा तो तलाक 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 This is PlayStation. Fun, anyone? This week on Young Turks in San Francisco, we meet a serial entrepreneur turned PC, a man who Forbes magazine says is among the top 10 deal makers of 2008. Hi, 
I'm Naveen Chada. As a venture capitalist, I finance companies. We also tell you an unusual story of an IITN who's turned entrepreneur and is creating waves with his online shopping social networking site. Hi, I'm Manish Chandra. I started Kaboodle from my garage. We meet an entrepreneur whose unique venture helps you organize your Kodak moments online. I am Manjal Shah and my company Like.com is the first search engine that lets you search with pictures and not just words. Catch Young Turks in San Francisco at these times only on CNBC TV 18. Young Turks International brought to you by Logan. The answer is here. Airline Partners, Singapore Airlines. Green Lamb Laminate, Har Koi Poochega. Kohler. Ista Hotels, so unexpected, so inspired. And In.com, register now to get the world's coolest email ID. Rakesh, how long will it take in your eyes? Uh, you spoke about stabilization and then consolidation. What See, are you resigned to, to? I want to make two observations. See, markets in the world are facing the greatest uncertainty they've ever faced in the last 25 years. And what markets don't like is uncertainty. And we cannot keep on extrapolating what's happened in the last 12 months into the next three years. Because at 21,000, I could have extrapolated that, boss, I have risen 50% in four months, and this is going to continue. Right? So I would not like to extrapolate what's happened in the last 12 months into the, fu into the future. At the same time, I would say that there is uncertainty worldwide about deleverage. But what gives me a little hope and an encouragement is that at these levels of the markets, we are pricing in the worst. See, it all started from the housing market in America. The fact remains that s September sales of existing homes has gone up by 7%. Sorry, August sales. September has gone up by 5%. New home starts in America have come down to four and a half lakhs. So I don't see, you know, we, why, you know, either in the markets are pricing in if there's going to be total economic collapse in the world, which to which I, I give a chance, but a very slim chance. I don't know whatever could happen to markets. I think we are pricing in some kind of global economic collapse, right? And I think if even growth next year, worldwide growth, this should be two, two and a half percent. There's really no degrowth. I think markets are going to go up next year. And I, to my mind, I don't know, in momentum and on charts, the US dollar is very strong. But to my mind, how can it ever remain strong? God help us. Samir, how long will all this take? The same question. Uh, we'll come back and talk about the fundamentals. But uh, you've seen previous bear markets. Do you think this one will test us for a year or two, even from here? That's what I've you know, always been saying. Depends on how you define a bear market. Coming out of this, a 10% move in the next one year would not be a bear market in anybody's mind because the relief of tension from what is happening these days. But before that, how one have, line. How we have you know, reduced our expectations, Samir? <laughs> absolutely. But it was always 20 for us in terms of earnings growth. But the point is, when you are buying stocks in a market, somebody is always selling them. And some, you don't know who, why they are selling. Mostly they sell for information or because they have a view. And sometimes they sell because they need liquidity. There is no third reason why somebody sells stock. So what would you rather have beyond the first few months? Because you know the pace of that selling might be too much because of the amount of deleveraging. But in general, what would you rather have? That the foreigner is selling to you because he does not like India or he does not get any signal from the fact that uh, Mukesh Ambani paid 3.6 billion a few months ago or because he's helpless because that is when the prices would be better for you of course you may say that today that amount of selling is too large and therefore I'll wait a month which I agree but in general the fact that somebody is selling because he has no choice just like you go to a market and they say going out of business sale is a better place to buy than somebody who sells I just have a sale so this has to be now, timing-wise, you can be off on day to day and therefore lose 5-10% relatively and therefore you wait 30 days, 60 days. But I would say if we all just defined that 90 days later, we would just go and buy this market independent of what the level is. Because this kind of deleveraging, if it has to happen, it has to happen over weeks and months, can't happen over quarters and years. Uh, that would be a good starting point. But I don't like the idea of, uh, of course, Uday and you being the leader of the ushers of this, uh, you know, in a crowded uh, theater shouting fire fire even though you may notice a fire on one end but the fact is that shouting fire when it is not really needed just creates more deaths in stampede as we know in India so the mm -hmm. point is everybody knows there's a problem but to think it is the end of the world I don't think it is but it's better that I cry fire Samir rather than cry 
say good things like you did three months back and let people get into stocks and they'd burn their houses, right? No, that is true. But the point is, in the end, to now bring up every reason also is not really needed. And also, the world does not get a free ride. You know, we cannot have a free ride in this world that we will wait, but we are all looking for confidence in the world. So it is a collective. Everybody is a participant in this market. We do, should not act as if we are observers of this market. Everybody is a participant in the market. It's just that some people think for a few days that they are mere observers. I am not a participant in the market and my job is not to say the good things when things are not good, Samir. I say it like it I'm is. I am not talking about you. I'm well, you just yeah, yeah, spoke about me, so I must defend it. myself too. My job is yeah, not yeah, to say good things. That's the finance minister's no, job. No, no, we all <laughs> say things as, as we perceive <laughs> them and we reserve the right to be wrong. <laughs> well, correct. Okay, let's not get into a debate on what I said and what I did not. Uh, Shankar, what's your observation on the, how long this 8-10,000 kind of range can last? This range has been a moving target, right? Yeah. I think it was 38 to 42 on the Nifty, then 36 to 38, and now it's like 25 to 28. And I'm no big lover of trading ranges. Uh, <laughs> the fact is that, you know, the whole construct of this bull market is gone. My sense is the S&P 500 will reach, you know, 600, <clears throat> which I think is a good, you know, 20, 25 percent away, thereabouts. Uh, the Dow will easily breach where it was in uh, October 2002. Uh, within that context, India still does very well because India is still up, you know, about two and a half times or three times on the index from where it started the bull run. And average stock is still up substantially. I mean, I look at a stock like, uh, you know, Unitech, uh, adjusted where everything was 60 paisa and now it is 30 rupees or 40 rupees. I mean, that's that's not bad returns by any standards. I think there is still a lot of money on the table to be taken off for investors for a, on a number of stocks and that's the real problem the outperformer gives you so much returns that people can still sell in reasonable size and still lock in gains which relative to let's say US equities market you yeah. know still look very very good the average stock I mean you know is up at least four five six times uh, you know in, in, on the good quality and in India I mean Bharti used to be a you know 45 rupee stock is you know it's 550 rupees I and mean, that's still serious gains for anybody so I am saying till that whole original bull market construct is uh, completely taken out of the equation. I don't think the new bull market starts. But within that, yes, Samir is right, you know, we could get a 10-20% rally. I don't think that amounts to anything at all in context of how much price damage and psychological damage, uh, you know, this bull market has suffered. It's a long, I, I, I don't think we are out of the tunnel yet. We are barely, I reckon, 40-50% into the tunnel. Well, I can't agree with what you saying. No, I was asking you whether you have con conviction to go out and buy today at 8,000. I bought today. Why what? What kind of sectors are you buying? Whatever from? I bought, I won't say what I bought, <laughs> but I bought. And I can tell you one thing that, you know, you cannot look at the S&P and the H&S in isolation. That from 2002, even in the base estimates which you have given me, the s earnings are up 3.25 times. I don't think the S&P earnings are up 3.25 from uh, 3.25 times from 2002. They won't even have doubled. So you cannot say that, you know, compare the Sensex, you're comparing apples with peaches. Here the earning has gone up three and a quarter times, there the earning has doubled. That is completely okay. incorrect. It's the same global bull market pond that every market drinks from. Well, so Nobody stands out. The only way you can attribute a bull market to India is that every market is down and India goes up 50%. Shankar, then I will agree with you. Shankar, Otherwise, it's a big global friend, macro move. My friend. Ultimately, what I have learned in markets and what markets have said is that ultimately markets are slave of earnings. If that history is going to change, I don't know. Oh, absolutely. That has happened change. in 300 years. It's going to change. That, uh, that earnings are not going to matter. And you're going to find stocks at one time's earnings. And you're not going to have consolidation. You're not going to have people who take takeovers. Because when I buy stocks, I'm buying value. I'm buying assets. Right? So if you tell me one thing is, if that history is going to change for prolonged periods of 10 years and 15 years, stocks are not, not going to be slave of earnings, but are just going to be valued just on any basis because somebody has a need to sell and somebody's leverage. History tells us at some value, if somebody's leverage, they, they emerge as a buyer. So I can't agree with you that, you know, we are going to have values just because Bharti has gone from 50 to 550, which means that Bharti must come down. I don't agree with that. It, it no, no, that's not my point. I'm saying that for an investor who bought, he still got enough so gains. Must sell. So it must come down to a gain? Exactly, because those are the places where you made the money. That's the place where you're going to take off the money no, from, but, the, from the table. Shankar, like like, like Shankar, it or not, that's the, way, that's the way people react. That they say, okay, this is still in the money. I heard you, Let's take. I can get you the tape. I heard you say and I quoted you 
that assets by equity by an asset class is one which trends upwards. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so it trends upwards. Oh, so absolutely. But it, but, it, but it doesn't trend upwards every single day. Anyway, US equities underperformed 14 anyway, years. They didn't go anywhere. India India didn't go anywhere for 10 years. We had a damn good run along yeah, with the rest the of the Indian world. Economy, Indian economy is not in mid-ages. Yeah. The Indian economy is just very puberty. We it doesn't, teens, it yeah. doesn't matter. It, what matters, matters is whether the environment is conducive to a global bull market or not. It's currently not. It was great for the last five anyway, years. Let's say you don't disagree, my friend. No, no. There's, 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 don't Time you tell us. Bear it out. <laughs> okay. Let me get a third party in then since we, since you two disagree. But Samir, you were talking about deleveraging, yeah. etc. What's no, your one sense? Minute, one minute, one minute. Ah, so you also want to ar argue you know, on this? Go ahead. Yeah. I was saying that, you know, Shankar is criticizing you much more than I did because he's basically saying that you are not needed, only we should watch CNBC US because everything depends on S&P, everything is a global bull run, we should just be a multiple. But that is a fact, you, so you show me the data that disproves that instead of giving opinion, give me so data. I, I, no, let's, I tell you, let us I'll go, to, data, let us, data. let's be, let me see boss. the data that tells me that my bull market stands away from I the global bull market. I will tell you a data market. boss, there is a, there is big parallels. In 1965, the Dow was 1000. In, 19, in 1965, the Nikkei was 4,000. In 1989, in 1989, the, the Dow was 2,000 and the Nikkei was 40,000. There are so many parallels. The, 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 in Let us talk about an economy like India, which has just converged with the global economy. Last 10 years, yeah, I, don't, least, I don't know of any six-month period in which India performed very differently from where the world was performing. That's, that, that's the reality. We have to admit it. Okay. Samir, there are many other reasons for that point which Shankar is making. One being, have you seen Maria Bhattiroma and how she looks compared to me? Obviously, people would want to watch CNBC <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. US. Come on, give me a break. <laughs> I hope Divina is not watching. Yeah. I hope Divina is not watching. <laughs>
मजबूती और बचत की गारंटी सिर्फ कैप्टन से कैप्टन टी एम क्योंकि हर कोई कैप्टन नहीं होता Celebrate Diwali Dhamaka with Central Bank of India's higher interest rates on deposits of 10% for 400 days and 10.25% for 555 days. Turn your wall into a masterpiece with textures from Asian Paints Royal Play. When you dare to be different. When you refuse to tread the beaten path, achievement is yours for the taking. Teachers proudly presents the 8th Teachers Achievement Awards. Genuine quality speaks for itself. I was asking you, Samir, uh, what's going on with the FI selling? When do you think uh, that nears some kind of completion? What sense do you have sitting out there? Well, you know, the thing is that as of now, we hear a lot about hedge fund selling, which may be true. But the only thing which I said last time also, the hedge funds normally get a much longer period. At least two to three months <coughs> period, everybody would get to sell. Therefore, this kind of selling, I think, has to do with maybe India-oriented country funds, where the redemption periods are that, you know, you have one day notice and pay within three days. Hedge funds may also sell because those guys are selling. But I don't think the driver of this kind of a fall would be hedge funds, because normally it's not that they have to sell within three, six, days even we who are much more liquid in terms of our hedge fund liquidity terms or redemption terms will have at least 45 days to sell at any point of time before an old redemption has to be paid out but in general you know I can't say that this is FII selling independent of the fact that the world is selling and therefore you know this argument that also invest I mean uh, strategists have about Indian rupee being de depreciating and all that and because India has some problems on fiscal account and all that I don't think that is the real reason right now it is a dollar driven reason because even against gold uh, which would have ha actually the best fundamentals in some sense uh, the dollar has appreciated a lot so we should not take everything on ourselves I think our problem as Indians also is a little bit is holier than thou you know we have these strategies who come on your channel saying how India is overvalued against the world by 40 percent without differentiating that we did not close our market on any random day or just did not choose to bring some government in and say buy stocks or randomly lock up some uh, CEOs of companies or fund managers and then give them visas if the world is not going to appreciate these differences maybe we should also all do these things and close our market for five days if the world doesn't want to penalize such actions but in general my point is only one that the world is not an all or none and actually even if you bought today and market fell 20 percent tomorrow if you are buying only one tenth or one fifth of what you are supposed to buy in this period it does not matter that is why i'm always a happy kid as i told you because i'm a long shot guy something is going up something is going down but in the end we are going down because we are net long but i could have chosen a little different stance and be net only 20 and then i would be literally happy every day the point is that even everybody's a hedge fund manager nobody should think that he's an all or none guy and the point which i was saying before is it is in our collective benefit to to give some benefit to what is happening around us and not to think that we will all wait but somebody else will buy and then we will buy because everybody is a participant every consumer is a participant every channel news reader is a participant hmm. every channel everybody is a participant in this because everybody is in the end influenced by it and will be uh, affected by it i would like to make one point to what uh, sure. samir said that I must point out that from 14,000 to 21,000, I don't think there was a single day when the NFI buying was negative. I think from 4150, 4200 to 5700, the day when they banned the PA, PA notes, up to that day, every day they continuously bought. And the story was, you cannot leave India. Every FI has to be in India, right? So I don't know with due respect right. to them. I don't know what I should say of their wisdom. I don't know for the reasons. I don't know what was the reason for them to buy 21,000. What was the reason for them to sell at these levels? What are the factors that drive them? But I know one thing that the factors that drive them ultimately reverse. It has happened earlier. It happened at 21,000. It happened last year. It will happen this year. Only In thing when the world fetches such signal. And already that value of holding now is estimated at about 60 billion dollars. So if you see the total world market, you know, where the assets are, you know, 5 trillion, 10 trillion, 12, 15 trillion, India has a small uh, part of it. Yeah. Udayan, 
Udayan, we can't talk about Shankar because he's been right most of this year. Uh, Udayan, but and I, uh, you know, uh, totally appreciate that. But I think look at other people who come on your channel and look at what they were saying about oil. That oil was in shortage, that oil was going out of supply, that there was one Saudi Arabian last field in the world. <laughs> and what, with great conviction, everybody would come in and say the same things. And three months later, uh, they come and say, now commodities are going down and now this happens. The point is, you cannot be carried, you mean not you as in you because you might take it personally, but you cannot be carried away. <laughs> Totally, totally, totally by the, totally by the moment, and therefore, obviously, we everybody's become cautious. We have now net, net 30 instead of 50 or 60. But the point is that you cannot walk away from this game if you are in this, and that includes literally everybody who is, you know, watching your channel. No, no, no. Portion 120 or 110. Can but you to think that we'll wait and everybody else will support us and buy us out is not is not going to happen. And can I look at earnings in isolation of ROCs and ROEs? Right, earnings are not a mathematical figure. I see you're going on a different tangent. No, no, why? I'm not saying about ROE earnings. Yeah, India is cheap. <laughs> when I compare India and Korea, if the return on capital in Japan is three percent, return on capital in India is twenty percent. I can equalize the P's there. Yeah. And today you look at it. If our long bond is eight percent, and we, if we had ten times current year's earnings, boss, I think we, the the index is getting a better better yield in the long run. What if earnings fall twenty five percent next year? Yeah, so that's the uncertainty, you know. But who knows that they will. I mean, nobody can say for certain that they will. That's why I'm saying you're pricing out. If, if there's global economic collapse, they could. Do you think they will? I'm personally optimistic they will not. And no degrowth at all next year. Oh, they are, they, the they, not 25 percent. We look at. We say that stocks uh, represent f present value of future dividends and future earnings, and then we look at one-year earnings in a very distressed environment. And even if it is down 10 percent, and therefore price everything of that, that what happens when uh, earnings are down? Beyond a point, you know, people say that earnings have not yet been reduced. Well, the market has fallen 65%. So you may say all this happened without the market taking a view on earnings. It is all simultaneously happening. There are many times in the world when bad news takes stock up because that is the way it works. Now what Shankar was saying that, you know, the dollar, uh, because it will strengthen, therefore uh, the rest of the world will be bad. Well, then you can kiss goodbye to Miss Indra Nui being the most powerful woman. She became powerful because she was running a multinational where she made all her money from a strong dollar or from a weak dollar. I mean, in the end, these are all self-correcting mechanisms. You will never have all or none and the world will not choose to have it like that. In the end, the world will not be confident enough to bet on only one factor, even if it is the factor that happens. But right now, because there is a process of redemptions or whatever the new word, deleveraging and all that, so it may take its course and therefore you wait 20, 30 days independent of what the price is and then by that time either it's the end of the world or this process would have taken us to zero or uh, the process, uh, the deleveraging would be over. It may still be an overhang because in future people may not take the same amount of leverage but that is as if we want last year's returns. You know, you have to have uh, returns in the environment in which you operate and I think right now for the next three months if somebody told me the market will not fall and will not go up and basically effectively will be closed down, it'll be the I'll be the happiest guy in the world. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. No, my point is look, it's it's, it's straightforward. In a, in a lot of cases, uh, what was the market cap of companies six, seven years back is equal to their interest outflows now. A lot of these companies are based uh, on commodities and cyclicals, I consider infrastructure to also be a cyclical because it thrives in eras of you know cheap capital and cheap cheap money, which is what we saw last five years. You know, Jayaprakash Industries market cap was lower than the interest it pays now. Uh, that why why do you single that stock out for punishment? Like it won't go well, up. Well, that 30%. is Samir's. Uh, well, you should be asking oh, oh, Samir oh, oh, that, oh, right? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Samir sold out of it long back. I'm I sure. Know. Samir didn't. I know. You? Long back. Long, long back. back. Long back. No, I mean he's the origin original sort of you know uh, uh, finder, if you will, of the of the downswing. But uh, uh, no. <laughs> so my point is, a lot of companies have built up huge balance sheet risk in India. We did the exactly the same thing in the 90s by putting up capex. This time we have done capex or acquisition, which is the same thing as capex. Uh, that is my real fear that you have so many and good names, blue chip names who have gone out, bid for companies at crazy prices. That's all sitting on the balance sheet. So I don't really pay too much attention to these earnings estimate for Sensex. I think that's, that's an absurdity which should be banned, you know, outright. Drawing a line through a, uh, you, know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you are you are drawing a 850 rupee EPS across a bank, across an auto company, across an infrastructure company, you know, across a, across a steel company, across a, you know, you know, across a or two wheeler company is saying that 850 times 10 should be 8500. I mean, 10 times P across all industry, including Hindustan Lever. 
Infosys technology run back see I mean I think that's absolute complete uh, absurdity so finally Shankar but that earnings will matter well, of course they the matter but they matter. matter on a disaggregated and sectoral basis not drawing a line through all kinds of businesses and putting a common PE to everything uh, coming back to the point my point is companies have built a very significant risk on their balance sheet and that no matter how emotional Rakesh and Samir get about the bull market and believe me and Samir is so right that we are not neutral observers I'm not boss, I'm we are a, one second let me finish I'm not I'm not a neutral observer I'm a participant and I benefit from a bull market as much as Samir or Rakesh do so let's make that caveat very very clear but that said you cannot not ignore the hard facts that our companies today have greater balance sheet risk and a lot of cases they have built these risks at pretty high levels of financing and uh, you know uh, you know done at a time when the dollar rupee was a you know 30 companies in the sensex i don't think three or four or more than five companies carry disproportionate debt equity ratio correct and, the, and, and, more, than, and more than five and of they them. have been the company that have actually done very well in terms of earnings the company that did not do well in terms of earnings have not done anything at all infosys has done well so, in full cash here yeah. correct so, infosys has done well state bank has done it was a problem so, what names do you have in mind when you say disproportionately large uh, no you have our steel companies you have some of our auto companies i mean they have gone and you know done done transactions which you know did and seem very Tata risky. Tata Steel, Steel Suzlon. Yes, sir, I'm saying there are five companies. Uh -huh. I even count them: Tesco, Telco, <laughs> maybe some of the real estate companies, Indalco. I don't see all of the 30 companies. No, Suzlon. Uh, Suzlon, maybe. But all of these 30 Sensex companies, I can't identify more than five companies. And I can't say that the, the all the tech companies are in cash. I don't think Reliance has got any problem of any liquidity. I don't think infrastructure has got any problem. Any of the Reliance Group companies, right? So therefore, oh, infrastructure I, companies have a lot of liquidity problems. No, no, I, mean, I'm I'm I think I think you should go and talk to them. Boss, when I'm looking, sir, there will be certain companies, but I can't generalize. So if the debt equity ratio of Indian companies may be at all time lows. Yeah. So therefore, the fact of the matter is that when you when you have gone and built up capacities, infrastructure spending, all those things you've done, uh, without really caring too much about what price and return that you're going to make on them. You know, I think in that in the downswing you will get hurt. Therefore, you need to do the time. Infrastructure pending in India has been excess up till now. That's you, what I understand. You do you do need to spend time, uh, marking time in this market. You you cannot build a case for the resumption, even if the earnings are you know not falling 25 percent in FY10. Although I don't believe that they will rise 10 percent in FY10. You know, to be honest with you, because looking at the history, last 10 years, you know, very many years I've had negative earnings growth. Uh, my sense is you're still a long way away from calling the bottom to this market, at least in terms of earnings momentum. And till that comes back, I agree with Rakesh, you need earnings momentum to come back for the market to revive. I don't think that comes back that easily and that soon. Mm. But I also wanted to point out one thing, what Warren Buffet wrote in his letter. Now, I don't know whether he's right in saying that we should buy stocks or not. But markets have bottomed far before the economy bottoms. That has been the history. When the, you know, if history and everything is going to be turned around in this time, in the next 10 years, I don't know. But have because they bottomed even before economies have start, started falling, yeah. which is the case perhaps now? Only a single market in the West has gone into recession, the others are still not entered No, no, recession. but you are pricing in, no? Today you are pricing in the recession. All so six maybe it could, maybe, maybe you could <laughs> see, and the, there could be a period of 3 to 6 months where markets, you know, where the economies may not bottom, or 9 months or 18 months. But what are you having the valuations today? Today you are having the valuation because you are pricing in the future. Now, to what extent you will go down, nobody knows, right? But to say that Bharti is 55 and is 550, so there's a long way to go down, or because uh, stocks are not going to respond to earnings, I can tell you one thing: that in the index of four, in the index of 4,200 in 1992, I think Infosys uh, Hindustan Liver was 200 rupees, right? And and when the market made a bottom, Hindustan Liver was 3,290 rupees. So it's not that stocks will not gain. And I don't think, I mean, I, I, I think this alarm is to say that India, you know, corporate India is very well, you know, very highly over, over dated. There are certain companies, but they don't represent the general companies. Mm. And they have been punished and punished severely. Some and Indalgo today has a market cap, which is less than what it raised in the right hand. If, if the market is not pricing in the fall in economy and growth rates and explain independent of this leveraging word only, why our market has fallen 45% this month? It is obvious that there are things being discounted. Now they may get over discounted or not enough. But to say now I will see some GDP number and therefore that will be another round of 40, 30 percent because that is what happens when a recession turns up in UK or somewhere else. I think we are doing it simultaneously. And at the end of the day, the alternatives also have to be seen. What else is the world, uh, not in India, but in the world, what else are they going into? Everybody is not going to keep their money in their bank because which bank will they put it in? And if they actually put money in their bank in dollars, that means the banking problem is over. <laughs> so at the end of so the day, put, it's all so a choice between various yeah, markets. Which is why HSBC ran out of account opening forms in London. 
Oh, please, yeah, that you stayed back in India also ran out of funds. I agree. So it's a, no, it's a very it. secure bank. But I the agree point is, no, but what I'm saying is these will happen for a few days, few weeks. The world, you know, look at the, whatever you may say, if there's a 20-year pension issue, that fellow will not, uh, to save his job, say I'm putting money in the bank and on day one, therefore immediately take a hit in his, uh, uh, in his what, he, you know, he will accrue. They will still all take those bets. That is the way the life works. So, so after it settles, the point is which market which country has better uh, opportunities or has fallen the same as other markets without having exactly the same problems. If India had in this fall fallen less, then you could have said that, you know, India is already getting rewarded for it. Now a market which closes down and a market which is open, a market which has restrictions and a market which doesn't, a market which still, l &T disappointed the market and disappointed us also, but had a 32% earnings growth. Show me, show me another stock in Russia, Asia, where Korea, where somebody went up 32% and then you may say whether it discounted or not. <laughs> I mean, the fact that we have 40 and 50 and 20% earnings growth, half the world doesn't have. You know, people talk about price to book. Please show the book in these banks in US. Fair point, but it's still sad that l and is at 700 and languishing, Samir. From a thousand eleven hundred. No, I agree. I'm saying. I'm <laughs> saying. Therefore, when the markets, when the everything stabilizes, the world will choose those markets, those countries, those companies where, independent of the problem, there was this extra thing. Uh, I mean, that the companies were performing well, but they got hit as much as everybody else. That is the point. Therefore, after a month or two, when this whole world has fallen the same percent. Nowadays, what's the issue? Everybody falls the same plus minus. But do, does everybody, every stock, every asset class deserve to fall the same? Does gold deserve to fall in the same week 20%? After some time, everybody will put it together and choose what they like. And in that, India has a very good chance. Fallen, because India gold, has has fallen, gold has fallen 35%. dollars uh, the top. Yesterday, I saw I gold had gone to Friday, week. $680. So, 320 and 135 lost 45% of value. Time, when you rank all these... With, with, with Russia, Korea, Taiwan, it can't be that the world will suddenly say, no, I'm going to keep my money in HSBC because, H, you know, that can't be the trade of the whole world. Introducing Paras with its full range of structural angles, joists, channels and H-beams for industrial fabrication. Paras leaders in structurals and TNT bars. Enhances the quality of life every day, everywhere. Crompton Greaves, Everyday Solutions. Celebrate Diwali Dhamaka with Central Bank of India's higher interest rates on deposits of 10% for 400 days and 10.25% for 555 days. Lakh talasho nahi mile wo, jisme main ke apna des. Just a few years, every destination may be out of reach. Save oil today or walk to your destination tomorrow. Dur ki soch. With major economic changes sweeping the world, domestic market fluctuations come as no surprise. But should you let them affect your financial goals? Angel Broking and CNBC TV 18 present Investor Camp. Watch India's biggest financial experts help investors stay ahead of the curve with advice that will help them fulfill their dreams. At these times, only on CNBC TV 18. Presented by Angel Broking, service truly personalized. Online partner, moneycontrol.com. ये है उभरता हुआ भारत इसकी गारंटी कौन लेता है 200 टन की सेफ लैंडिंग की गारंटी आसमान को छूती इमारतों में चैन की नींद की गारंटी जेके लक्ष्मी सीमेंट मजबूती गारंटीड
let's talk about the guy in India. Uh, they they might not have such an international perspective. Has it come to the point, Shankar? Do you think where people can say at eight thousand sensex, if I put in money, I'll get reasonably high chances of getting more than FD returns over a one-year period? Can you take that call today? Look, I think the market has gone from being a buy and hold market to being a trading market. That's the characteristic of bear markets that you do get very sharp. In fact, you can probably and I and I still do believe that there will there is one big rally in this market, uh, you know, which is which is going to surprise us, which will you know make it look as almost as if we are back into bull market territory. Fifteen, sixteen thousand kind of rally. You know, the, my target initially was that from ten thousand it would rally to fifteen. To be honest with you, and in hindsight, it was too optimistic. Now, you know, it could well go down to six thousand or seven thousand and rally from there to twelve thousand five hundred, which is where we were last month or maybe the beginning of this month. So there is one big rally in there. This is not going to be a buy and hold market. This is going to change its colors, its stripes, become a trading market. Timed right, he is definitely going to beat the returns of ten and a half percent or eleven percent of the FDs. Timed wrong, I think he is going to lose everything. My sense is FDs and FMPs. We all know, you know, are in you know problems of their own. Uh, you know, good solid FD ten and a half percent looks really really attractive. And if you lock it in right now, because you know obviously the cycle is turning. You know, I think you're in good shape. I'm just talking from a pure retail retail investor's perspective, not a professional investor who can be fleet of foot. Mm. Same question to you, Sameer. Since you've always spoken about asset allocation, uh, this it's not worked this this year for equities. Do you think, from a one-year perspective, you can take that call and be right from these beaten down levels? If, if you if you if you uh, put in the investment average over the next three months, starting tomorrow, one then one month later, then one month later, <laughs> yes, you will do better than fixed income. Why do you keep saying those 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, Samir? Is it, is it because is, you know, believe my, my there's view, more I to come? No, my as I told you, my view is that in terms of uh, uh, timing, you know, it, because the pace is momentum is strong. Either it blows itself out and everything is over and the index goes to 1500 or 2000, or this deleveraging uh, led redemption or forced selling. The pace is such that it can go on for five days. Who, who's to say? But it can't go on for 90 days. That's what I'm trying to say. That it will either end because it will fall so much, or the pressures would be off because the end investors would say there is no point in selling at this point, and may give you not a one-year window, but may give you a few months window, saying okay, I'll redeem after nine months, six months, and then you have that. The point is that right now the selling is not happening. Normally, in most cases, because the fund manager has a very negative view on Reliance, knowing that one week ago Mr. Ambani bought it at 3.6 billion, or because Warren Buffett says, and I don't agree, but because that poor guy has a redemption. So once you let that go off for a minute, either because the market has gone down a lot or his uh, uh, desire to raise money is over, you will have that rebound which Shankar talks. After which again there will be frustrated sellers, pent up demand. I mean, pent up selling demand, and that may you know then make the market trade uh, sideways or plus minus a little bit. But that first round, we are not sure when it ends. See, what I personally feel is I can't say whether you should put it now or not, but I think two factors which should dramatically improve the atmosphere for Indian equity. One is interest rates are headed nowhere but down. I think in my calculation, and I have studied the WPI index, you will have between five and up to six percent inflation by March. And you know, in, interest is one of the biggest factor in valuing assets. So when interest is going to go down, I think that that gives that will give a kick to equities. Second, I think one year ago nobody was bothered about India's monetary and fiscal position, and the only joker in the pack was oil. And I think the oil being down, and I don't th not seeing any recovery for oil. I think India's monetary and fiscal position and foreign exchange position next year will dramatically improve. So I think these are two factors which could drive up valuations in India, right? I think we are pricing in some of the correction in earnings already in, into next year. I'm personally bullish on the ability of the Indian economy to grow. I think Indian economy is in its teens. Having said that, I must warn: I have been wrong in the last leg of the market. So please say, take whatever I say with a pinch of salt. But I would, I would say, I won't say this for the next one year. But if you have a two to three year horizon, I'm quite confident. With interest rates coming down, India's macro position improving, and I have confidence in India's economy. I think equity is going to give a much higher return. Gentlemen, we are out of time. Thanks very much, all of you, for joining in. That's this Diwali. Obviously, it was heated because there are. different view points in the market particularly in the light of what's gone on these last couple of months let's see how things pan out maybe it will take time but we live in hope happy diwali to all of you uh, and uh, let's hope we are a whole lot higher by the time we speak next diwali